I would like to start by giving um, just a brief overview on what are the main challenges that we face in terms of malaria control and malaria elimination in the Mekong region. Um, as you have heard this morning from several presentations, we have increasing number of sites reporting um, suspected and confirmed malaria artemisinin resistance in the region. We also have a very special ecology of the vector, which mainly breeds uh, close to the forest, uh, which results in what we call malaria related, for, forest related malaria. And we also have a huge um, volume of uh, cross border movement uh, and migration, both internally within countries but also between countries in the region. And when you put all these three challenges together, or those three dimensions, I think it's important to highlight this is a specific high risk group. Um, that we usually call mobile and migrant populations. And I would like you to keep that group uh, and that, that um, term in your mind just for a while because I will be coming back to that particular um, high-risk group later on in the presentation in terms of uh, where we are moving forward uh, if, uh, with malaria surveillance efforts if we are aiming to malaria elimination. But now moving more into the Cambodia uh, context. As you know, Cambodia um, endures um, uh, and National Strategic Plan for Malaria Elimination in 2011, and uh, which was uh, laid out as a phase approach um, from 2011 to 2025, where there was this control phase to pre-elimination to elimination phase. In the short-term control phase, the main aim, as it has been highlighted in other talks as well, was really to scale up malaria control interventions and trying to reduce malaria burden um, to less than, uh, in this particular case, the target was two cases per thousand population. Um, now from 2016 to 2020, the second uh, pre-elimination phase um, was aiming f mainly to focus on plasmodium falciparum, malaria control and elimination, but also trying to reach a very important milestone. Um, and zero malaria deaths, so no having any malaria deaths in, in the country by 2020. And the last long-term um, objective of the National Malaria Strategic Plan for, malaria, uh, for Cambodia was really um, eliminating any single form of malaria, both Vivax and Felciprum, by 2025. Um, but w how well are we doing and where are we at the moment? So just by looking at these graphs, you can see there has been in the last decade um, a very good um, progress in terms of steady declines of the number of treated malaria cases and the number of um, malaria deaths. For example, highlighted in the red line, we had about 600 malaria deaths in 2000 compared to only 46 um, deaths uh, last year. So we are getting closer to this important um, target of zero malaria deaths for Cambodia. Um, we, we also see a similar pattern of um, reductions of malaria incidence, where we are roughly on three cases per thousand population, um, as observed, uh, reported last year in 2012. Um, so we have seen quite a lot of changes in terms of the malaria burden, but also the malaria surveillance has really changed. Um, one of the important turning points that really triggered that response in the malaria surveillance um, of uh, the National Malaria Control Program in Cambodia was really um, the, um, the containment efforts that really came from the containment project that started in 2008. And that really needed to respond to falciparum resistance. It really needed to respond, as uh, it has been mentioned before, to every single new plas plas plasmodium falciparum case. And it needed a surveillance system that was uh, capable of having village incidence specific data and uh, capable of having a, a real-time response information. So what we had before that time we was the typical control um, program um, surveillance system. So we have a, a, a malaria data aggregated down to health facility uh, level, but not to village level. We also didn't have this laboratory data link with the number of treated cases, so there was a disconnection at, at the individual level um, stage. Uh, we also have very limited data in terms of uh, drug resistance or proxies to drug resistance like um, day three positivity rates for, uh, for um, ACTs. And uh, the uh, risk stratification of the National Surveillance um, Cambodia program was based on distance to forest. And, um, and uh, it was important to really start categorizing um, 
villages by actual burden and actual um, incidents of malaria. So there were a few things that really needed to change and we needed to have information at the village level as the lower geographical unit, um, to have demographic information, age, sex, but also the type of um, species, type of um, um, where malaria deaths were being reported. And also it was very important to have that data fully integrated so that planning and, and planning of interventions and deployment of intervention, interventions like mass um, distribution campaigns of uh, IT, ITNs could be really properly targeted and allocated. Um, what, did, um, what major changes did happen? So in terms of reaching the community level, as we said, most of the service delivery happened up to the health center. So it was really a scale up of the so-called village malaria workers, um, which are community health workers that are providing early detection and treatment um, at the community level. So there has been a very um, a, a steady increase in the number of village malaria workers really targeting and providing um, diagnosis and treatment at the community level, but also that um, it was a very important reporting mechanism from the surveillance point of view as we were collecting information from the village level in terms of the number of cases that were being reported. Um, that information also needed to be integrated into a new malaria information system that had to be much more detailed uh, compared to the existing HMIS um, system. So um, it was um, a new system was developed in order to capture information coming from the village level as well as the health, information, health facility level, uh, which was also the routine HIS system. And it was um, implemented in the 45 operational districts which were um, identified as the malaria endemic operational districts in Cambodia. So this map really highlights the, the coverage of, uh, of the op malaria endemic operational districts and, and also just a snapshot of the front uh, page of the malaria information system where you can actually um, um, run your queries and try to retrieve information from different months, different health facilities and different villages. So one of the major um, capabilities uh, which are very, very useful and are being used um, very frequently for, um, at the National Malaria Control Program are the, the ability to really be able to go down now to a village level um, um, and then uh, retrieve information on how many cases occur, what sort of uh, malaria um, uh, is, uh, species was, whether it was falciparum, whether it was vivax, whether it was reported at a health facility or by the VMWs, and trying to see um, having for the first time village incidents specific um, uh, data. From, from that moment, one of the other very important um, developments that took place in, from the malaria surveillance point of view was the, really the automated creation of malaria bulletins that could, in a timely manner, report and provide an update of where we are uh, in terms of malaria burden, but in terms of malaria interventions or real-time information from um, day three positive cases. So the malaria bulletin, it's really an automated um, report that this is just an, a snapshot that um, you can actually go online and retrieve every quarter there is an updated uh, malaria bulletin and, and you can retrieve the information and it's, um, it's a four four or five pages, and uh, this is just an example, but I would like to highlight this is one of the most recent uh, malaria bulletins where up from up to um, September 2013, this year, um, last year was 35 malaria deaths were reported. This year we have only seen seven deaths. So we are really getting very close to zero malaria deaths target, and it's a very encouraging um, um, target uh, from, from the um, National Malaria Program. Um, the Malaria Bulletin has been really um, disseminated and shared quite widely and um, one of the major feedbacks that was needed is that it needed like proper feedback down to not just the national figures, um, as especially in Cambodia, malaria incidence is very heterogeneous, so you will have very high transmission districts and very low districts. So you want to see how you are making progress at operational district level. So we have moved one step forward and trying to come up with automated malaria bulletins at the district level. Um, so that could provide very quick feedback to the operational districts and to the 
public health um, departments and provincial departments and even potentially at the village level that has a specific um, section that bulletin that you could go down to health center level or village inf in specific information um, for for interest and, and reference but from uh, from the operational point of view it's very important to ensure you can monitor progress at an operational district level and um, the ability of having uh, village-specific incidence data was very important in terms of re-stratification. Are we deploying interventions in the right places? Are we allocating resources properly? Um, as I said before, re-stratification was based on distance to forest in the past, but with the ability of this new information system, though now we had village-specific incidence data, um, it was, we were able for the first time to see where most of the burden, the real burden, um, was actually happening. And um, um, as you can see, it's mostly in, in, uh, in the northeastern part of Cambodia where there is higher incidence of malaria. Um, so this re-estratification approach is actually happening and being finalized at the, uh, by the national programs. And uh, we have automated um, this system so that it can, you can actually have a look at the old categorization, the potential new category, and then trying to identify um, what will be the new re-estratification for future interventions, which are actually taking place now with the new Global Fund um, grants. One of the other important requirements that the surveillance system needed to um, have in order to be able to really um, respond quickly to um, um, new alert systems was the ability to, um, it, it, the, exist, the, the previous system didn't have the ability to, to um, identify cases quickly enough. So it, it needed um, a, a series of um, innovative tools that were capable of providing that information in a timely manner to trigger a response. And I, I was just listing here some, some examples of when we needed an alert system and what sort of response was needed. Um, just for example, we, for the, from the containment experience, we needed to have real-time information about day three positive cases, day three as, as a proxy of potential um, um, artemisinin-resistant parasites. And, and that really needed to trigger a, a response in terms of uh, potential focus screening and treatment or IRS deployment in the households or nearby. And that information needed to be real time. Um, so um, another example has been the uh, recent change of the first line treatment in Pylin district um, to, to Malaron and um, the uh, need to do a full 28 day follow up uh, of the cases. And, and ensure there is dot treatment. Um, so there has been a day zero SMS alert system being in place and completely scaled up to, to ensure that that information was properly um, um, reported to the existing um, malaria information system. Um, and um, to, to, in order to do that, uh, we have um, gained a lot of um, uh, lessons from, from the containment uh, experience that really um, resulted in a scale-up of, of these new interventions. And that has been really thanks to um, the, the amount of work that has been put in new tools and innovative tools, especially in mHealth technology. And um, I won't go in detail in this particular presentation, but I really want to point out that if you're interested to hear more about mHealth um, uh, uh, approaches in Cambodia for malaria surveillance, Please, there is um, a, 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 an, a, an additional session on Friday morning by one of our colleagues, and uh, it will be focusing particularly on explaining how the Day Zero SMS uh, system has been implemented and scaled up in Cambodia. And just um, moving slightly into different uh, topics, so well, yes, this has been really, really great uh, successes, but is this enough? Are we moving quickly enough in terms of from a surveillance, um, malaria surveillance point of view to really be sure we can um, allow um, uh, or uh, fall, monitor malaria elimination um, uh, appropriately? Well, I would say the simple answer is no. It's, I don't think it's enough. But um, the positive side of it is there has been really a lot of new platforms and new frameworks in which we, we can see where to um, uh, move forward. Um, and uh, as it was highlighted before, we have currently a, um, a plan of action, which is not an action plan, and I completely agree, but it's, uh, it really highlights or um, uh, 
provides the right framework to know where we should be focusing, particularly also on um, and surveillance. It's important, uh, I would like to highlight for this particular um, error uh, document um, that it it's, um, highlights particularly high-risk groups like mobile and migrant populations, which really um, brings back to my first slide on, on if we are really trying to um, scale up um, and contain artemisinin resistance and really ensure we're going uh, to eliminate malaria, we need to go down to the last case, which really means um, properly targeting and monitoring um, malaria elimination efforts, particularly in hard-to-reach populations like MMPs. Similarly, there has been also more political will and donors um, to really trying to push these artemisinin resistance um, initiatives and again highlighting the need to really focus on evaluating responses to hot populations, um, uh, targeting hard to reach populations like mobile and migrant populations. So I think um, we have um, the, a good momentum really to, to um, in, in Cambodia and in the greater Mekong region to really start critically thinking on what's the next step from, uh, from, uh, from the surveillance point of view, what else do we need to do and fine tune to make sure we can actually reach elimination. Um, well, there are still um, several gaps that we, we need to address. There are several um, um, challenges that are still pending. Uh, for example, the integration of um, these routine monitoring and evaluation systems um, and, and how we can actually make sure we not only we identify how to reach people, uh, populations and we target um, interventions to them, but how do we monitor progress? How do we monitor the impact? Um, there are several options um, at the moment that are being uh, implemented in Cambodia. We, um, we have had a series of um, respondent-driven sampling techniques, which are like snowball um, sampling approaches or social networks, and we, we try to identify migrants, and uh, following the social network, these migrants identify other migrants, and through that process, we can identify uh, learn more in terms of knowledge, attitude, practices, but also deliver BCC interventions and monitor prevalence and potentially progress um, of um, interventions to that particular group. There are also new technologies in the pipeline. We are developing um, um, new ideas to, with other partners like, um, like Chai in terms of um, the use of, rather than SMS-based technology, um, voice technology. Uh, we know that hard-to-reach populations or ethnic minorities and, and mobile um, and migrant populations tend to um, have lower socioeconomic status and not always the SMS sometimes have the limitation of, of the English language. So we are trying to, to pilot a different approach in which we can potentially identify mobile and migrant um, population through uh, a new technology, Verboys, that is currently being um, reported as quite success, as successful in Cambodia on other diseases. Um, other potential uh, challenges that we need to face um, to, to improve the national um, surveillance systems, well, it's really making sure there is a really, really rapid and timely response um, and also um, identify the best ways of reactive and proactive case detection in particularly operational districts that are really moving to the pre-elimination and elimination stage. We have had new, um, uh, some experiences on focus screening and treatment, and um, we need to look at what is the potential role of subpatent parasitemia, and is there clustering, or how, how much clustering it, it, it happens at the village level, but also at the, class, at the household level. Um, just an example of piling of what is actually being um, implemented at the moment, just um, on that um, diagram you will see that at the moment what we already have in place is um, if there is an index case or a malaria case being identified at the moment, it's passively identified either through the health facility or by a village malaria worker. So the next step will be um, which we are testing in Pailin is once we have an index case, we go and try to screen the index household and screen absolutely everyone in the household and see um, who else turns up to be also positive and what is the level and the amount of clustering that is needed. And this sort of uh, operational research uh, information will help uh, to scale up uh, quickly um, the, um, the potential 
um, reactive case detection approaches that the national program needs uh, to move um, towards malaria elimination. Uh, and finally, just um, on my last slide, um, of course, um, the role of um, other um, drugs like Premaquin in terms of paratmodium falciparum, um, gametocyte um, uh, cure, and what will be the role of plasmodium, uh, primaquine in terms of plasmodium falciparum um, elimination, but also in terms of vivax, how will we monitor that impact uh, over time through our existing surveillance systems? Um, this is just my, my last comment. Um, that information system, it's very important now with all this cross-border movement that really creates a core regional surveillance system that we understand um, the, um, the progress made in each of the countries and how to integrate early, serve, early warning systems um, within the region. Um, I will stop here and I will say thank you, but I will also like to take the opportunity to thank um, everyone that has been involved in strengthening the surveillance system in Cambodia, which really involves um, many stakeholders and partners at this point. So thank you, everyone.